I'm Sabrina Taro, and in today's video, we are going to be looking at did they mean what they said? Because yes, you're going to be getting an, a yes or no answer to the overall question being asked. But we're also finding out, well, what was the motivation behind what they said? Why did they put it this way and not that way? And why did they say yes if they didn't mean it? Or why did they say uh, yes and they meant it and then they put it in that way? Whatever it may be, often the way people put things or what they're trying to disguise their innermost feelings can say a lot about their motivations and general uh, viewpoint on the perspective. Basically, we're asking one question and we're getting a lot more answers than that, as you know, as I love to do with tarot. So this goes for anything from romance to a serious conversation. Maybe someone was very kind and giving you compliments. We're trying to gauge, can you trust what they are telling you? And then understanding the deeper meaning behind that. So we have four groups in front of us. Group number one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna give you a moment to pick the group that you resonate with most. Now that you have your group chosen, you can go down to the description or you can go to your designated group and it's marked timestamp. Let's get started with group number one. Group number one, let's find out, did they mean what they said by looking at the cards? We've got seven of pentacles in reverse. We, oh, sorry, I got confused by the sevens. <laughs> Another seven, uh, seven of wands upright, three of swords upright. Five of Swords Upright, Page of Pentacles in Reverse, and King of Pentacles in Reverse. Sorry, I'm just looking at everything. Oh. Okay, this has such a vibe to it. Um, such an ominous ending over here. Um, it's so interesting. I, I'm. It's so set the ending of what we're going to talk about, uh, but so left up to interpretation. You'll understand what I'm saying. For me, it's left up to interpretation, but for your individual situation, you're going to ultimately know the exact answer. Um, I know that seems really vague and haunting. I didn't mean that at all. Uh, we're going to get specific. It, it, for many of you, this can be a positive thing. I think there at least is a positivity in the certainty of it all. But let's get into specifics. Uh, this over here is your ultimate answer. This is the background. And this is giving a touch of flair of context and is ultimately the ending of the circumstance as a whole, which I think is uh, fun. So First, let's start off with the background situation. We have got the Three of Swords upright being paired by two tumultuous cards. All three of these are. I can see by the Three of Swords, this would be the type of relationship um, between two people where there was a lot of trust, a lot of love, and those are often the times when it hurts the most, when you feel betrayed. Because betrayal isn't always just being with someone else, friendship, romantic, or working with someone else, or, or this act of you thought you were in it together. It can be an emotional type of trust that gets betrayed. Maybe you both uh, came from backgrounds where it wasn't the happiest upbringing. And when you were together, the two of you, you kind of were like, it's going to be different with us. And so when the uh, fighting or disagreements, whatever may have you uh, started, it, it fe felt like you were betraying each other and the context of what you wanted out of the situation between the two of you. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But I, I can see how much the two of you care about each other and how hard it's been. But this is interesting over here, the perspective between the two people. Both of these cards insinuate fighting, which makes sense that the Three of Swords you know, this sense of pain, emotional pain, being between the two of you is popping up. But we have two different perspectives going on. In the Seven of Wands, we have you, the person watching this being perceived. Uh, lots of uh, pushing back, not backing down. This would be someone being pushed into a corner, corner having to retaliate, having to uh, 
defend themselves and it understands the context that you're not really the instigator of this and you are very strong-willed so i get a sense of your personality and saying like hey 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 you can't talk to me with this way hey 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 we're not letting this go we want to talk about this and i can see over here by the seven of um uh, pentacles in reverse that it's been going on for a while tones have been set or or discussions have been set of being like hey things need to change hey i don't want this and they it's been going on for a while but the other person in uh in this reading has kind of an interesting perspective uh keep an open mind when we hear this because their perspective is going to initially seem personal and mean but we want to understand their brain better to understand while it was personal how it was handled between the two of you, it wasn't personal in their tactic. They would have approached the situation this way to anyone because this is who they are. And let's get specific because this is how they're represented by both the Five of Swords upright and the King of Pentacles in reverse. But keep in mind, it goes into a very positive spin, I'm happy to say. With the Five of Swords, this is someone, often this card relates to a situation where it gets into verbal type of fighting and it can get very below the belt mean. But most of all, this is somebody who's in it to win it. They see the argument as a match and they want to handle it tactilely. And it's not about taking you down or hurting you personally. Again, how can you not hear this and say, well, it felt personal in the moment when we were having this, you know, disagreement, this, this argument or whatever. But they weren't thinking of personally attacking you. It's just how they approach every single situation. This is gets example uh, exemplified over here in the King of Pentacles, which is why it's such a big deal. It is in reverse. King of Pentacles, whether it's upright or in reverse, I can see they're very, um, just to simplify it, we'll say business-minded, money-focused. This is somebody who sees approaching life as, you know, viewing their life and self-worth as a sense of accomplishment, whether it be making a lot of money, um, getting into a really nice, you know, school. There's always this sense of when they tell themselves to, to, to explain who they are to other people, they want to be able to say, I went here, I did this, I did that. And while it might some come across as boastful in some cases, or too much or whatever, this is the only language they know. It's not even a love language. It's just the only language they know. And there is a sense of um, these people tend to be the most sensitive because while they might come across very harsh, if they aren't able to have this list sort of behind them to explain who they are and tell others how much they're worth because of this... It, you can see how much it upsets them, which is why they defend it, because they don't really know any other way. They think this is the only right way. It's a lot of competitiveness and um, viewing things from a logical, practical mind of being like, this is how I get it done. Again, they're not thinking, I want to take them down. They're thinking about the overall sense of winning. So we have one person who takes it too far in the fight and the other person just trying to defend themselves because of the whole circumstance. But either way, a lot of love. But here's where it gets really interesting. The King of Pentacles is in reverse. This is the first thing that caught my eye when I put the cards down. This is someone who's deciding to put that part of their personality down. Put it away. They're tuning in and realizing maybe this isn't really worth it this approach. Maybe what once satisfied me then doesn't work really now. Because if you notice, there's a lot of love here and you and the connection between the two of you is becoming stronger than what is going on over here in their business life and making them so happy in that way. Like this just doesn't have the same sort of thrill it once did compared to over here. Now this mentality of going, you know what? I'm going to change my ways. This way of approaching everything in my life isn't working for me anymore if it means I lose the person I care about the most. So we see in the Page of Pentacles, again in reverse, a new notion being forged. I love this because normally when the Page of Pentacles is upright, 
it would imply a uh, token of investment is being presented to you. Often this is like a wedding ring or uh, someone saying to you, hey, you want to move in together? Hey, you want to start a business together? That kind of concept. But in reverse here, it is being presented not as an action of being lifted up in the air and saying, hey, I want to let you know that this is some small gesture I'm doing now, but in the long term, I want investment. This is someone offering that idea to you, but think of them as instead of handing it up to the air in the sense of it could go anywhere, any option, any possibility, it's being planted into the ground. They are offering you a fresh start, a new belief system. They do want to continue in the long term. And the answer is yes, they did mean it. They do want uh, a new turnaround, something better going on. And they want, uh, they really like, if big words were used where they were like, it's going to be different this time, I really mean it. They really meant that. That is the mindset, that is the attitude and energy truly being put forward. And I want to be clear here, not intentionally put forward but then no action shown later they want to they're going to work on the action they're working on with not just the words they're giving to you now here's where the ending is sort of like ominous the way my spirit guide put it in the um seven of pentacles uh in reverse is that everybody's decision has been made and i was like what do you mean by that they said So when they make the decision that they want to be with you, that decision has been made. They really mean it and are going to do and, you know, show however they need to show to say they want to move forward with you. It's not just words or, you know, um, just something they're just saying for the sake of the moment. But it appears the way my spirit guide put it is that you already know what you want out of the circumstance. And this could really go either way because this is a general reading, keep in mind. But this is asking yourself, have you already in your head feel kind of done with it? Or in your head, did you check in and kind of from the very beginning think, no matter what happens, I want to stay with them or I want to stay in this circumstance. Either way, I'm happy to say, if you do want to be with them, they are turning over a new leaf. They're conscious of the mistakes they've made, why they've made them, how they've made them, and they realize it doesn't work anymore, and they find that you're more valuable than the way, the old way they used to function. But if your decision is, I don't know if this works for me anymore, that's valid too. Because for some people, it the past has been built upon for too much, for too long. It's not working anymore. So overall, really interesting. It seems that things are, lines are already being drawn in the sand in both accounts for both you and this other person. So please let me know in the comments below, is this something that you're sort of looking forward to seeing the action, seeing the turning of the leaf? Or do you feel more a sense of relief, feeling like at least you know they did care, but you are finally ready to move on. Um, or don't say it. I mean, I, I love hearing what you guys say in the comments, but these, this is also very personal information. And like, I really, <laughs> I want you to feel safe and happy and comfortable here. <laughs> Either ways, please consider uh, leaving this video a like, a subscribe, hit that notification bell. I am wishing you the best. I will see you in the next one. And let's get ready for group number two. Group number two. Let's find out. Did they mean what they said by looking at the cards? We have Queen of Pentacles upright, Three of Pentacles upright. Sorry, I got got confused. Uh, Four of Pentacles in reverse. Wow, look at all of this yellow. King of Cups in reverse. Page of Wands in reverse. Three of Wands upright. Let me look at all this. Give me a moment. Ooh. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Okay, this is very specific. So let's get started with what's going on over here. I can tell first off by all three of these uh, cards going on over here that this is a work situation uh, related, working with like a couple different people. But here's the issue. 
There is someone taking sort of the alpha role in the group project, you know, working with others, whatever may have you. And as they are taking sort of this leadership role, whether this be guiding the rest of the group in the project, or maybe these are coworkers you work with very often on your shift, you get the drill. But anyways, this dominant personality, there is a fear that they will somehow affect your personal power. This is a subconscious question you're asking. You're sort of feeling off. You're concerned about the project because see over here, Page of Wands is saying like, oh, should I do this? I'm not sure. And the indication I'm being shown over here is the King of Cups. So the King of Cups in reverse is showing me that that's the dominance. That's they're they're really um, charismatic. They're very good at getting what they want. They tend to take precedence in the room with the type of energy that's very commanding, but maybe they're not in the best emotional place in their life right now. This is such a wide gamut of emotions. It can range from anything from jealousy to mood swings to, you know, it's a lot of ups and downs and there's a worrying feeling of not feeling like you have your voice in the circumstance and you're not being able to, you know, speak your mind and show your input as much as you want, but more so that because they are the commanding one, it's not just that they are taking charge, but are they really the best person to take charge? You know what I'm saying here? Especially when we have you so eloquently shown in the Queen of Pentacles. This shows us that you have got the skills. You have got the energy. You are ready to go. You have enough, um, like you are at a point in your career and the circumstance at hand. You do know what you're doing. You've built up this energy and flow. You're ready to put it somewhere and you will make the right decisions. You have the right techniques. You've got the right belief system in which approaching the circumstance, everything. You're ready to go. This is why it's all shown in yellow. Yellow is associated with the third um, chakra, the solar complex. It's all about I do. It's your personal power. And this project is putting that to the test because, and this is where the question comes at hand when we have the four of pentacles in reverse, you're kind of sitting here being like, would it be better if I don't associate myself with this concept or project? I'm not really sure. It's a big deal. Clearly, it's a big enough deal for you to not immediately say no and leave and not deal with it anymore. It seems like it's some sort of an opportunity for you to work with them and work in this, uh, be with these other people. But you're kind of saying to yourself, ooh, is this a risk? Is this the right thing? I can see that, yes, they did what mean what they meant. They do want the project to do well. They do think that you are talented. These words and these intentions were real. They are trying to move in a good direction for the group as a whole. But the answer you seek comes from a combination of discussional counsel with friends, and we're going to get specific about that, that in a moment, and also how you need to take this opportunity to rise above and not get sucked in. So over here, uh, or sorry, over here, these two match. The three of wands upright says, you need to go express yourself to friends. My spirit guide was very clear, not coworkers, friends. You're going to go to some friends where it can't get back to the coworkers at all. And you're going to express all your kind of worries and fears and all the situation going on. And it's not necessarily just about hearing the feedback of other people around you. Um, I would definitely beware staying around anybody that's too much of a yes man. Try to find friends that will ask questions about the circumstance because just just by you saying out into the universe, hey, I don't know what's going on. This is what's going on. These are all my worries. These are the circumstances. By just expressing it and hearing a little bit of feedback, you will ultimately in your heart know what to do just by like hearing the information come back to you. It's not about having someone be like, oh yeah, that person's a jerk. I don't want, yeah, you're right. You should get out of there. I don't know. You want a discussional based friend to discuss these things with. But as you find out and look back at yourself hearing all the answers and being like, you know what? I think I can handle it. That is sort of the, think of that as the ignition to your inner flame of power we're talking about with the queen of pentacles. See, the ultimate answer here is that the project with it being upright, with the uh, three of pentacles being upright, 
this can work out. This can work out in your favor. This can work out as an opportunity. But the biggest opportunity is not just the financial benefit, the just general, like, what you're going to get out of it in the long term of um, of working together with these other people, but by not getting sucked into this other person's intense energy, but rising up to it and showing that you are also a dominant force and not being reactive when they are, is going to be more a test of showing to yourself that you've got this. That's often when we become our strongest. We real we need to have that proven to us, not pushed. And and you know, sometimes they say um, you're meant to be pushed down to get back up. It's that kind of like, oh, rise above. It's more that you're being tested to be like, you won't know you're courageous. You won't know you're confident until you put that confidence in action, especially when it's so much easier to give in to falling back. Are you going to fall back or push forward? And we're not talking about an argument between the two of you. That's not the vibe I'm picking up. It's more that when they start to boss you around, you kind of take a moment, look them in the eye and go, I see that you're telling me to do this thing, but I'm going to go do this. And if they're like, well, I need to do this, go, that's nice but we're working together as a team and I'm I'm going to go work on this and this makes the most sense right now. When they feel a sense of jealousy, you just don't have any emotional reaction. It is not about combating someone, but showing that you're not going to give in. And here's an important thing, not not going to give in because of like spite or something like that, but just whatever they're putting, if they weren't there, what would you be doing in the circumstance? That's how you'd be reacting. So let's say you're working on a project at work and you want to be the person that, um, uh, you, you want to be organizing the schedule. I don't know, I'm picking a random thing. And the other person goes, okay, go work on these, you know, go make photocopies or something like that. And you'd be like, no, I'm going to go work on the schedule. Yeah, but I need you to go make photocopies. Well, the photocopies seem important to you. You can go do the photocopies right now. What is also important is I'm going to go work on the schedule. I don't, I don't have to do what you're saying. You see what I'm saying here? And just kind of slowly setting the sort of boundaries and letting the other person know, uh, what's the term? There's a term for it. When you let people know how you're gonna be treated, that's kind of the energy being put into play here. But I would still recommend through the cards, you're gonna feel a deeper sense of confidence going into all of this. If you can kind of throw around ideas and circumstances with a friend that can help you see the situation as a whole, it will take away the power you feel is being pushed upon you. Because I don't feel like you're intimidated by them. It's just that, I don't know why I'm, I'm feeling this. It's like, when someone's a drama queen and you feel like you're accidentally put into a position by them to everyone catering to the situation at hand, it's you not getting mad at them, but just being like, hey, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to cater to it. You can have your tantrum, but I'm going to be, you know, over here getting stuff done because you're more than capable and you're ready to do it. So mull some stuff over before you completely consider with the four pentacles, this is the idea of saying, should I cut out of this project to truly be free? But you should also ask yourself, why am I viewing this circumstance as a four of pentacles scenario? Because whether it's upright or in reverse, this is someone who feels they don't have enough to offer and it would be easier to close off or skip out because they feel like they're running out of the limited resources they have from energy to emotions to actual, you know, creativity or whatever may have you. But a queen of pentacles? No, no, no. Not only does she have more to spare, but she can always make more. You are not at the mercy of what you think you have to work with. They, The universe is working with you with what you can always continue to accomplish and create. So keep that sort of mantra in your head going forward in any aspect of your life. <laughs> so please let me know in the comments below, how are you going to kind of... Uh, work with someone that difficult and not give in? How are you going to find your, like, would you have a friend in mind as we speak where you can kind of bounce these ideas across? I would love to know in the comments below. Also, consider giving this video a like, a subscribe, hit that notification bell. I am wishing you the best. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And let's get ready for the next group. Group number three. Group number three. Let's find out, did they mean what they said by looking at the cards? We have the Lover's card in reverse, Page of Pentacles upright, Nine of Swords upright, Six of Wands, 
in reverse, King of Swords in reverse, and Eight of Swords upright. I'm just looking at everything. Give me a second. Oh, interesting. Okay, um, I can tell you no, they did not mean what they say. I can just like flat out say that right now. So here I have you shown over here in the Page of Pentacles, um, very patiently waiting. Um, in front of you, you feel the sense of worry of if you and this other person are going to stay together, be together. There is a lot of concern with the lover's card being in reverse of it just separating and dissipating and falling apart. Um, I kind of get this feeling that you might believe that the two of you are soulmates. Um, I, however, do not see cards right now that are saying that, but that doesn't mean that can't be the case. I just want to be clear about that. Also, fun fact about soulmates, uh, soulmates do not always mean that they are the love of your life and you're meant to stay with them. It could just be someone you have a past karmic tie with, and that is why you're responding very intensely to them. But that being aside, um, I can feel there's this sense of like concern and like feeling like a sort of destiny boundness between the two of you. And I can see behind you, it's causing a lot of woe with the Nine of Swords being upright. Um, this is a lot of repeating thoughts. This is on your mind all the time. And you're just kind of stuck in a circumstance of waiting, of saying like, what's going to happen? Are they going to come back to me? Is this going to work itself out? And it's just plaguing your thoughts. We can actually get really specific as to why it's plaguing your thoughts. Notice that the thing that's being projected in front of your mind is what's been bothering you in your subconscious behind you in the Nine of Swords. But where does this energy come from? The other person, in fact, the person that we were asking this question about. Their whole mentality is beautifully expressed here in the uh, these three cards. So the Six of Wands in reverse shows me they are the type of person to view love as a sort of win or lose circumstance, unfortunately. Um, this can get pretty dangerous, uh, not in a, like a serious way. We're referring to um, the functionality of the relationship. So, you know, if, if you say no because you're just not ready right now about something, they would consider that losing. They wouldn't see it as you just blanketly not ready for the circumstance. Or if you uh, end up saying, yeah, like, let's let's go uh, be together and do this thing, they would consider that a win. Everything is a win and lose, whether you say yes or no, rather than realizing, you know, you're considering your emotions at the time, you're considering how you feel, you're just going with the flow. Uh, human emotions and interactions and relationships are not meant to be simply defined as a competitive sense of uh, end game of where it goes. And that's kind of how they're viewing it. So when they don't feel like things are working out well between the two of you, maybe there is a every time you've hung out, it's been a little off. Instead of realizing there's just been a lull in the relationship, not a big deal, their brain goes, oh, I'm losing. And because I'm not impressing you, them enough, they, uh, they're they like, I guess I'm losing. It's not working out. And they're kind of keeping too much of a tally in their head rather than asking other questions, which it's like, well, wouldn't you want to be with someone that if things are a little weird, you know, you can talk about it. Uh, how do you feel about it? Did they even ask you how you did feel about it? What this all meant? They're oversimplifying their interactions and they're overly judging themselves. That's a big thing. I don't want you to take from what I'm saying that they are judging you. They are judging themselves and how they interact in the relationship by these factors that are not your fault. How they take it is their issue and their thing to tackle. It is not your responsibility to carry it for them. And you haven't done anything that has necessarily caused this reaction. They've just kept, they've viewed it in a way that was unhelpful and sort of like ultimately like doomed to go in this direction due to this, their own perspective rather than the actual circumstances that happened. 
Does this make sense to you? So it's not about that things went wrong for a little while. It's that they didn't bother to ask other questions and that if it wasn't you, they would respond this way to other people. You see what I'm saying here? But we get a better insight of why they view that way when we have a king of swords in reverse. This is somebody who handles things in a very practical way, um, very logistically, and it and or logically is how I want to put it. I use the wrong vocabulary word, <laughs> logically. So that means they have a pretty straightforward approach. Um, when a king of swords reverse is in reverse, um, yeah, this is when it gets kind of like intense. When it is upright. And when it is upright, this is somebody who's quick on their feet. They're very smart. Um, depending on how intense that, I know we talk about different levels of like pages and queens and stuff like that, but kings do vary. There are people that are very king of swords and smart and can give you an answer very quickly and kind of can be intimidating. And then there's some that you see their intelligence, but you don't feel like they're pressing it upon you or their energy is too intense you know sometimes you know what i'm talking about that some people have that magnitude with their king of swords energy where you're just like whoa i feel dumb in comparison and you just kind of start to back down automatically kind of vibe well when it's in reverse this is somebody who doesn't have a handle in the confidence of how they're approaching a situation and they're not thinking straight because there's no other factors coming into play. It's only their brain and then their emotions are responding to how they're thinking. Rather than when you're thinking, you're kind of taking in your emotions, you're taking in the circumstances, you're thinking about all the different possibilities, you're, you're factoring a lot of other elements. Because there's only one way they're approaching it, one way they're factoring it, all the other ways that they are reacting in the situation are only being concluded based on this one method so the other factors are much more implosive a good way to explain this is like because they're not taking in their emotions into asking themselves how they feel what you're feeling things like that the emotions for them are more out of hand and they kind of are separating themselves and being like this isn't working this isn't happening but this is just a temporary state of being for them but it's a serious one when we have an eight of swords uh this is somebody who has become just so overwhelmed they've kind of closed themselves in defensively they have set some barriers and limits up because it is too many options for them it's too much and they're sort of caging themselves in which is ultimately unfortunately blinding them and putting them in a, themselves in a position where they're not able to think clearly or approach things in a way that they would be happy with in the end. Um, ultimately, this doesn't end with, uh, or, or what I want to go on is all of these emotions are leaking over into you with, with what we have going here. This is being picked up. You're picking up their energy. And so what's making the circumstance worse is you're not able to feel like your best self, not only because you probably miss this other person and maybe you're hurt by what happened, even though I do want to clarify again, no, they did not mean what they said. They're being temporarily, they're not in the right state of mind is the best way I can put it. They're not thinking straight as their true selves. This energy is then, in addition to your woes and worries, is influencing your subconscious, you're picking up their energy and you're sort of accidentally feeling for them. Remember we talked about that in our energy video. You can just return that energy to sender back to them. All of my energy video, I talk about that and how to remove people's energy from you. So you can go check that out my spiritual talks playlist. But in addition to that, because you're working out their feelings, it's confusing. It makes you more confused and more anxious. It's like your insides are trying to organize something and nothing ever seems to like make it feel better or make it feel more organized because how can you console something that is not yours to console? You don't have the answer because it's not your problem. So one thing is I would highly recommend getting that energy off you as we just discussed and then just taking a breather Stop thinking about the worries of it. Pull back. Realize you are a page of pentacles. There is still a glimmer of hope 
especially in your own personal happiness right now. Understand that right now my spirit guides did say I tried to push and ask more questions, but they said right now, this is not definitively how it's always going to be, but right now this is just how it is. There isn't a clear answer at the moment of just saying what's going to happen next. For now, this is what they're going through, and it's about being aware of what you can do to feel better, at least in this moment in yourself, and feel better about the circumstance, and at least feel better of knowing, no, they did not mean it. It is not personal. They're going through their own thing, and they didn't even express themselves in a way they truly meant. They'll most likely later be like, oh, I didn't mean that. Oh, that's not what I really feel and think now that I have had time to breathe away from the situation and get my head on straight. So keep those things in mind. So please, um, please tell me uh, below in the comments how you're going to, you know, separate this energy from you, how you're going to kind of get resetted. Uh, how, what are you going to do in the meantime as they evaluate themselves? I'd love to know. Also consider giving this video a like, a subscribe, hit that notification bell. I am wishing you the best. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And let's get ready for our final group. Group number four. Group number four. Let's find out. Did they mean what they said by looking at the cards? We have nine of pentacles in reverse, six of cups upright, ten of wands in reverse, the fool card, or the sun card upright, the fool card in reverse, and the devil card upright. Give me a second to look at these. Hmm. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a little difficult for me to put into context. I will do the best I can. But my spirit guide says, because I, I understand the circumstance I'm seeing in front of me, but I'm trying to understand the context of the question I had, like, you know, did they mean what they said, you know, or not? And my spirit guide says, in some cases, yes, in some cases, no. It depends on the context. And we're going to be going over that. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So over here, we have the other person we're talking about acting like the fool in card in reverse, and this is causing the devil card upright. When we have a fool card in reverse, this is a scenario where somebody is forcing a sense of free spiritedness, forcing and making themselves do things that seem like they're so carefree because they totally don't feel that way. It's uh, very similar to when people have like a midlife crisis. You know, we're going to use like movies as like a comic, you know, joke standard idea where like somebody is going through a difficult time in their life and they buy a young sports car and start acting irrationally and, and do things to feel significantly younger because they're struggling with the process of aging and stuff like that. This is somebody being like, oh, come on let's go to a concert and you're like uh, I don't know this doesn't look like the best situation I don't know if we should go like you know what I mean it's choosing things because they want to show themselves off in such a way but they really are aware that they're kind of trying it's like a, the best way I can put it is they are trying to fake it till they make it but it's not going to work. And unfortunately, it is causing the exact thing that they don't want, which is over here in the devil card upright. It is a sense of imprisonment. It can feel tied to boredom, tied to uh, feeling like they don't have any options. Now, I want to be clear about something. There is nothing with all these intense words and things we're talking about. Nothing going wrong at all with you. Nothing at all. The sun card shows me this, and uh, my spirit guide confirmed that the even situation at hand is completely fine. It's that how they're interacting and perceiving and then responding and making decisions that's making them feel like this, but it is not the situation. So example, we're going to just give an example. Let's say this is a romantic relationship. The situation between the two of you is great. You love them. They love you. You've got everything all of you need. If they need to feel like they have, need to spend some time more by themselves, because sometimes as couples, you know, you spend too much time together and you need a little bit of a some you time, you would happily give that to them. There's nothing 
bad going on here. It's actually quite wonderful. They're going through their own personal dilemma kind of out of the blue. And as they're making these choices, they're kind of needing to go through these mistakes to cause the exact thing they don't want because it is helping them have, you know, we always talk about the universe is where the universe reflecting, uh, where the universe experiencing ourselves. They're not acting free because they don't feel free. So they will experience things that make them not feel free because they're trying to show themselves how they feel and then tackle the reality of like, well, actually, no, everything's fine and great and you do have options. Why do you think that everything's not okay? So then how we go on to that, we actually get a little bit of an answer in the 10 of wands in reverse. They really, 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 they're just overworked. They want to get all of this responsibility and intensity off them. It's too much and they are done with it. And the more they feel like they have to, um, you know, maybe they're, they're, maybe the two of you want to do something happy together. Again, we're using a relationship as an example. And the two of you want to buy a house one day. And they're like, okay, I'm going to work, work, work. Yeah, we're going to do this. And then over, all of a sudden it becomes a bigger responsibility than they are really aware of. And they start to be like, uh, I don't know, I, I want a house, but now I'm suddenly aware of how much money I have to save and it's starting to kind of build up so they're trying to take care of themselves by acting free and silly to give themselves a sense of relaxation and they're lying to themselves thinking oh yeah I'll just compartmentalize I'll work a lot and then I'll force myself to have a lot of fun in the free time and it's just adding up it's not working. Whatever is this big sense of overload, working overtime, this big decision, it needs to be put on the back burner. It is messing them up. Now it appears, now this is what I meant, and we're going to go into more specifics over here because this is where it kind of tails off in an interesting direction for you. But this is what I mean by the context of what they said, if they meant it or not. On one hand, if they said they were okay and everything's fine and nothing's going on, no, they didn't mean that. Not everything's okay. On one hand, yes, it is. Like, they do love you. Everything's cool. Everything's fine. The interaction between the two of you is fine. But they're kind of going through their own painful journey as an individual. It just, you happen to be involved in the process. You get what I'm saying here? But on the other hand, if they said, uh, you know, like, um, yeah, it has nothing to do with you. Like, it's really not about you. That's true. That, that they meant what they said. You see what I'm saying here by context? But this is where I think this is really interesting and the thing about tarot is things will pop up in tarot that seem kind of like out of left field, but you want to go with it because whatever's the most important is going to pop up to the surface and it popped up for a reason. So over here in the Six of Cups upright, it shows me that this is an issue that has popped up a bit in the past with this other person. Has this popped up with them with other people too? occasionally okay occasionally but otherwise this is kind of a repeating pattern that's happened and this this uh everything's going great and then sort of an emotional outburst or i wouldn't say an emotional outburst things seem like they're going great and then it's almost a sense of self-sabotage going on and and it's uh it's become a pattern so to speak and you're familiar with it and you're being sort of guided to the nine of pentacles in reverse which again this is such a weird thing to, you know how I, I, I like to have everything kind of tied up in a nice uh, bow, so to speak. In the nine of pentacles in reverse, my spirit guide says that you should save a lot of money right now. And I was like double checking. I was like, uh, is something going to happen to their finances? Like, I thought you said they're cool. Is everything okay? You're going to keep making money. In fact, because it's a nine of pentacles situation, you're going to you're going to keep doing great. Everything's awesome. There's nothing to worry about financially. But when we have a nine of pentacles upright, this is when it's the time you're feeling great. You're feeling confident. It would be a good time to go make big purchases, hang out, have a good time. Can we use the house as a metaphor? This is not only saying now is not a good time, not because of the worry of losing finances, but we're talking more of an emotional thing. So you're going to keep receiving money, but it's better to kind of keep it more in-house right now. It's better to kind of sit at home with what you have, smile, look at your bank account and be like, okay, this makes me feel good when they're freaking out and we're having a moment. Right now, my emotional comfort comes from knowing I'm 
building upon, like I'm building my own little treasure trove and nothing can really affect me whether the idea of them leaving me or whether we do or don't want to buy a house. No worries. I've got my thing taken care of. Everything's good here. I'm saving money. So again, it's not the subtext that anything bad's going to happen. It's more of a comfort thing. So think of the sun card as less of a, normally with the sun card, it, it would advise this idea of like, you're feeling so good, you're potentially on the horizon of going out into the world and showing everyone how good you feel. In this case, you want to kind of hang out in your own little private garden and just enjoy the flowers you have before you go out and travel and, uh, you know, navigate the world for some new think of some new flowers to add to your garden you don't want to do that quite yet you just want to hang out enjoy what you have and then when you have these moments of worry you can look at your garden and be like i got a, like a good thing going on here so again save your money be aware of this being a repeating issue this will make you feel good that this is a repeating issue and understand that this isn't something you did wrong you're fine the situation's fine they're going through their own personal woes so yeah, please let me know in the comments below. Does that, you know, does that give you a sense of relief that you can just be like, oh, they're doing them. They're working their own thing out. Now everything's good in my boat. And does it feel good hearing that you got all this money coming in? It's going to keep coming in. And you're going to be very excited about looking at your uh, rising bank account. We love hearing that. <laughs> Anyways, um, please also consider giving this video a like and a subscribe. Hit that notification bell. I am wishing you the best. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Goodbye.